Number two, grace helps you heal from the disappointment you have in yourself. Grace helps you heal from the disappointment you have in yourself. Stop right now. Let's thank God for Jesus who loved us enough to give us victory over these tough subjects that we're dealing with. It's never fun when we feel disappointment in others, but an even greater pain is when the source of the disappointment is you. See, Martha had the privilege of pointing the finger at Mary. Look at her. She snitched on her sister. But what happens when you ain't got nobody to snitch on? And you got to look in the mirror and say, this pain I'm feeling is because of me. Usually, the disappointment we have in ourselves is the direct result and is completely connected to us allowing others to project their expectations onto us. Instead of us walking in the freedom and the victory that we have in Christ, what we do is we take the deed and we take the mortgage of another person's thought and expectation for us and we start paying the mortgage on it and we start paying the bills on land that's not even ours. Now we inherit the debt of it and they're going on about their business. Now you got to carry the dream that God gave you and the dream of somebody else. I'm talking to some people that unknowingly you've been spending a great portion of your life living for somebody else's expectation but I'm here today to tell you that the debt has been paid and you are now relieved from the deed and the mortgage and the bills of other people's expectations you are free to get into your own territory he's already paid the price you are free to step in the domain that your good father has for you you are free to leave what other people possess and to get into the space where God wants you to rule and dominate you've been free to transform transition out of renting from everybody else's expectations you now have God's expectations that is your strength that is your joy and that is your focus I don't care what you think about me I'm focused on his expectations we inherit it and we're trying to live out responsibilities weights and burdens of other people most of them don't even care about you did I say that loud enough it's the sense of failure you get you get when you feel like you haven't lived up to your parents expectations it's that turning in the stomach that you get when your reality doesn't match the dream you saw two years ago it's that feeling you get you can't do what others want you to do and you end up carrying their weight and the weight of their disappointment and you made it your own this isn't new it's in the text John chapter 12 verse 1 through 5 you're gonna like this one y'all same three people same family let's look at Mary we looked at Martha in the previous text how about look at Mary the text says, six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here's a dinner, here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. Then Mary took out a pint of pure nard oil an expensive perfume she poured it on Jesus feet and she wiped his feet with her hair and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume but one of the disciples Judas of course who was later to betray him he objected this amazing act of worship why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor he was disappointed he said it was worth a year's wages. Mary came in to the party and she probably said to herself, this party is dead. I'm about to do something to light this place up. I'm about to pour out some worship and I'm about to love Jesus. This is the last chance I may have to do it. 
I don't know what these cats talking about up in here. I don't know what all this giggling is about, but it's dead. And I got the liver, the, the, the God who gave me life and changed my life, the God who got me off the streets and put me back into a place of notoriety and significance. I'm about to come up in this room and I'm going to release a fragrance over the feet of Jesus and I'm going to worship him and the, the fragrance of life is going to fill this room because that nard oil was used to get rid of the stench of the dead but Mary said it's dead in this place and I'm going to release this oil over Jesus because now I got the opportunity right here in my sister's house right here with my brothers and sisters right at a gospel circle I'm going to do something unusual I'm going to do something that's going to be misunderstood I'm going to worship Jesus in the midst of my pain I want to prophesy to some people who are always misunderstood Understood. I want to speak to some people who have become the object of other people's disappointments because of your actions. Her actions disappointed Judas. I want you to know your story is not over. They can talk about you now, but Jesus is going to talk about you later. <laughs> they don't understand what you're doing. But Jesus knows exactly what you're doing. They don't get you, but God does. They didn't understand what she was doing, but God did. Look at your neighbor in the DJ Khaled voice and say, God did. Oh, y'all know how to do it. Nine o'clock didn't know how to do it. I love it when the misunderstood worship. I love it when the misunderstood pour out everything. Mary took the oil that was calculated to be worth a year's salary. She cracked the bottle and she opened it up. You know what I love about Mary? We trip over the tithe. Mary poured out a whole year's worth of her salary and she said, I'm not holding anything back. I love it when the misunderstood worship because they worship with a crazy passion. They don't care what you think about them. They clap your hands even when you ain't supposed to. They shout every now and then. They stand up every now and then. They put participate in the presence of God. I love it when the misunderstood get a revelation of who God is. They don't worry about your silence. They're not intimidated by your demeanor. They said to themselves, all that he's done for me, I can't help but give him praise. He brought me out. He delivered me. He set me free. He raised me up. You don't know my story. You don't know what I've been through. You don't understand because you ain't walked in my shoes. You don't know the chains. You don't know the stress. You don't know the worry. You don't know the fear. But I'm free and I'm ready to worship the King of Kings. And I'm no longer limited by what you think about it. Hey, Shohotaba. Hey, I'm talking to some people that don't care what other people think. I'm talking to some folks that don't give one dying because they know their value in him I'm talking to some people who groan now and they have expired from the need of being approved by others because they are so in tune of the approval of the father I'm talking to some people that ain't scared of Judas Judas didn't intimidate Mary. He may have intimidated everybody else, but Mary said, I don't care what you think, you little crooked snake, always in Jesus' face. I'm going to worship him with everything I have. I'm pouring it all out because he's a God of increase. He'll give it back good measure. He'll give it back shaken together. He'll give it back pressed down. I'm releasing this to him because I trust him. I'm releasing it because I love him. Because he's my source. He's my strength. He's my joy. He's my song. He's my solution. He's my healer. He's my helper. He's all I got. She wasn't afraid of Judas' disappointment. First of all, I'm going to give you some confrontational points right now. I'm going to tell you why you don't need to worry about Judas. Number one, you ready? The party went for Judas anyway. They said the party was for Jesus. So Jesus should be the one who's dishing out approval and disapproval. 
you're in a beautiful party. When you come to worship and gather together, there's a party going on. Your life is a party. Your life is a celebration. And Jesus is the main host. And Jesus gives out the approval and the disapproval. But guess what? He already made his judgment. He says you're loved. He says you're approved. He says you're accepted. He says you're mine. He gave you a seat at the table. So when we pour out our oil, it's not to get approval. It's the celebration of the approval that we already have in him. But you got to be able to do certain things while you're in pain. You got to be able to function while you're hurting. You got to be able to worship when you don't feel like it. You got to be able to deal with Judas even when you're weak. You got to be able to deal with the disapproval of other people even when you're not at your best. I've discovered something about Judas and other people who always project their disappointment on you. They tend to always make it about them. This party is for Jesus. You need to be lucky you here. Matter of fact, dude, this is my brother house. I got a room over there. You a guest. You don't make decisions in here. I prophesy today that you stop letting strangers make decisions in the space that God has given you. The only one who makes decisions in the place and space that God prepares for you is Jesus. And he's already made it. And he's given the power and the authority to you. You control the atmosphere. You've got to say so.